for this lesson, we will be doing a old age or middle age character. I'm going to do two versions of this uh, that aren't specific characters in a drama, but two extreme types so that you can see the kind of variations that you can do with using uh, age makeup and tilting it a little to one side or the other of what you do uh, when you're simply doing yourself aged. Uh, I'm going to first do a extremely pleasant nice old lady and then I'm going to do your sort of scary uh, witchy you know frightening old lady. So um, to begin with all of them, you go and use your base. For this one, I'm using a base color that is a little rosier than my own tint. So I am a pink and healthy old lady. To do these sorts of makeups, it is best to go and use the face outline sheet you will have made after taking your photo, based on your photo, and you will want to go and put your plan of action for this in the form of a rendering or colored drawing of where you're going to put the different colors of makeup to create the character. By the time you get to doing character makeup, you want to go and do a rendering each time because the more you plan it on paper, uh, the easier it's going to be to get it right and the better your overall results will look. I have down here below, where you can't see, but which will be cut in uh, to the video, uh, the picture of the pleasant-faced old lady that I'm about to do. Mm. And Okay, as I said before, uh, when you have forehead wrinkles that occur when you scrunch up your forehead. You have to account for the different forms of forehead wrinkles uh, with the way your face moves when you decide on a character. You have to use some part of what's there instead of some part of what isn't there. So, for instance, for this forehead wrinkle, I want to go and do something that's sort of broad I also want to do the corrective makeup thing of making the forehead rounder because it's a pleasanter look. So I'm going to take shadow and I'm going to put shadow bits in this rounded shape. Assuming we're still using my hair color, which is got enough gray in with the black that you could use it for a person older than myself. And use that to bring the hairline down and round soft. Then, of the various parts of forehead wrinkles, when I go up like this, I have this happy bouncy thing that's going across. They go up here like a smile and then back down again on either side like a not so smile. I also have this where I go in and it makes the eyes closer together. 
So what I'm going to do is from these forehead wrinkles to do something that looks pleasant and smiley, I'm going to pick this wrinkle here and only use the smiley part of it. When people are asked to make abstract drawings showing the concept of happiness, what they end up doing is drawing lots of different things, sometimes bubbles, sometimes butterflies, sometimes simply squiggles. But what they all do is they draw ascending curvilinear forms. So if you want to suggest something as bubbly and happy, you try and use as many curvilinear forms, circles, rounds, curves, and so on, and have as much of it suggest that it is going up as possible. By doing that, you can go and make somebody look like happiness. You also will go and take facial expressions that are on the pleasant side, like make those in the mirror and see where the lines occur in your face. So for instance, if I'm surprised and happy, I get this. If I'm angry, I get that. So if I'm trying to do an old lady who spends a lot of time being pleasantly surprised, I want to go and use these little areas here as the part of forehead wrinkle that I'm going to put in. Another thing that I have is these little lines here. I'm having these go up but not having them go down. On the other hand here it's almost like a little extra eyebrow that looks, well, surprised. So I'm just going to use the highlight on that, not make it too pronounced, but make that extra little wrinkle show. Because it gives that sort of surprised eyebrow look. So, hmm. So even when it's at rest, it looks a little bit like that surprised look that you get when you go there. Next. Um, for age purposes, I still want to go and put a little bit of shadow by the side, but I don't want it to be particularly strong because that tends to pull the forehead in and look a bit threatening. So I need just enough there to suggest that the bones are a little sunken. Now, uh, eyes. If I'm occasionally worried, I can go and do this slight worry thing. But if I'm always like that, I get this, that would have a big dark section there. So what I want to do is suggest old lady, but old lady who spends more time, well, surprised. Ooh. So that would have a tendency to create a little section that goes up here. My own face, though, moves too much in this form to completely ignore that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this slight worry thing, but I'm going to take that worry section and not make it quite as pronounced as I would if I were trying to make an angry old lady. So. In other words, I give it that little fold. It's there. But I don't turn it into these giant hollows and don't do things that make the eyes look closer together. It just has a little bit of a worry line through there. And I make sure that the other end of that worry line, which in reality sort of goes down if I crunch it a lot, but it goes down and then has this little end that goes back up again. So I'm going to go and take that and pull it up. So again, I've got a curve with the ends turned up. That gives it a little more surprise look. Then I 
take my highlighter and put that in. Same thing. Suggest something is going up again. Now, something that isn't on my face, particularly, as I do have the eyes fairly close together thing, I'm going to do as I did for corrective makeup, where I have a lot of light color in here to suggest eyes further apart, as in grandma who will bake you cookies, not grandma who will bake you in the oven in order to go make you into cookies. So I'm actually going to ignore what's there, little shadow areas here, and fill in with that white, that sort of Chinese opera Indian light color here. Now I can get away with this because I've put a shadow here where it would be naturally, but I haven't gone and put it in all the places it would be naturally. But there's enough there that it fits with what my face is doing. So, blend that up. This gives face a lot of lightness between those eyes. So it again suggests uh, a pleasant and harmless older person. Now, I am going to want to go and do stuff to give little bits of agey wrinkles. One thing that I can do is uh, I can go and take the fact that I have this short, cute nose and make it the most of its shortness. So instead of going and painting, you know, a straight line of highlight, I'm going to go and actually do, take those little rounded bits, make those little rounded bits into a couple of little cute round things, curvilinear forms. And I'm going to take the age of this little spot here and make it again a little smiley shape thing. And something that goes around here to make those two little rounded forms more rounded. And pull the shadow down. So I have a cute round little bouncy nose. And the little worry thing in here is very, very small and just makes the nose look shorter. Uh, ultimately, what I'll do is I'll also put a little bit of pink on the nose, bottom, which will shorten it further. And if I do too much, we'll suggest I'm a drunken old lady, but <laughs> if I do just a little bit, it'll have that kind of bunny rabbit look. A little bit of pink on the tip. So I've got little round noses. Now, under the eyes, I still have to go and do bags and things, as one would normally do. However, you can have the bags make somebody look very sad or very like that. But if you're somebody who spends a lot of time smiling, you do, in fact, get a whole lot of little wrinkles down here. So what I want to do is, again, take the smile-shaped curve form this bag. I'll put it in there. It's nice. Make sure it goes up again, not just goes down. And it goes like so. 
If I want to go and do something a little further down so that I've got an extra set of wrinkles, now if I were to do one that went straight down, and since this area here, I don't actually have anything happening. Because I don't have anything that when I scrunch up my face will contradict it, I can paint ones that go straight down and look very angry, or I can pick ones that go down and then go back up again like this. Which again looks like you smile a lot. Because it goes back up again. Then, uh, for putting the uh, little creases on the side of one's eyes, I'm going to make sure that the lines go up and up and up. Even the ones that are coming from below the eye that would normally be going down, I have enough stuff that when it goes, hits, I can make them head up. Just a little bit more curve going that way. So, they're lines, but they aren't sharpened crow's feet like they are smile lines. Same thing with your highlighter underneath each of these. Highlighter under your eye. Use a lot of highlighter under your eye for this because it will make your eyes look bigger. making sure that all the ends go up. Okay, so I have a whole series of things that make it look like I smile too much from here on out. Now, let's see if we can get the lower part to do that. A quick way to do, uh, figure out what to do with that is smile. Just as you smile to show up where the lines of your nasolabial fold are, you can also look and see, in addition to the nasolabial fold, mark where it is, but also see if you have anything that's likely to go here. I can go and make the most of that. And if you don't have that on your face, you can put it in. The main thing you can't do is have a line that goes across this. I can't go and take this nasolabial fold and run it across here because the edges of it show up when I smile down here. So, but I can add ones that don't exist if they're not going to run count counter to anything I've got. So, here I've got lines going. Now, when you're trying to go and figure out what to do with these lines, you can, if you want them just to go down, have them go down and then stop. Or, in my case, I'm going to make sure that they curve and then at this point on me, even when I smile, they run out, which means I have a choice down here where I don't have a line. If I want to go and make it go down, or if I want to go and make it curve around back like this, which again looks more like smile. So put those lines in and shade out.
then use highlighter. Okay, so putting things that go around your mouth like this that also do the smile help. Um, for the cheeks, I have these round apple things. So I can go and make the most of those and really, really run amok with them. This is a moment where I can actually have quite a bit of fun with messing with the rouge because I can have the lower part of this be shadowed with the rouge to give that very pink apple-cheeked grandma look. Make those areas look extra round and peachy through here. And as I go like so, take highlighter and put that there in a rounded motion rather than just on the cheekbones as we would do if I were trying to make my face look skinnier. I don't really need to make my face look skinnier for this. What I want to do is make it look round and happy and well fed. So, now, I may want to go and put in a little bit here, because if I make that look skinnier, just a little bit in there, I get another little rounded form. So, I'm going to put a bit of shadow through here, but pretty much only to make the curve of the rounded cheek a little more pronounced. I don't want to give her a very skinny face. People associate very skinny faces in old age as, I'm going to eat you. So, uh, you know, yonder Cassius has a lean and hungry look kind of thing. So, uh, now for the underneath the chin area, or yeah, underneath the lips on the chin, what I want to do is, again, make something suggestive of little smiley bits. Now, normally I'd have like a little dark spot here. I can take that dark spot, however, and make it go up into this little sort of double curve shape. And I'm going to make this go there, go down and around so that I can make another curved shape, bottom of the chin, go up. So I want a little sort of smiley shape, but with a rounded yeah. Now, jowls are little curvilinear forms. So I can make the most of my jowls. I can go and put my little highlighter up here. Because I know where my jowls live, I don't have to do this. You may want to go figure out where those lines would be. But mostly what I want to do is get the highlighter, because the highlighter suggests the rounded parts. The shadow, on the other hand, suggests the indents. So more of the highlight and less of the shadow for making this look nice. And I'm going to take and use again a little bit of pink color as the shadow that goes into the indents of the chin. 
skin, a rosy cheeked grandma. Not. Now, I also want to go and put a little bit of red near the eyes for age purposes, but I'm going to put it on the outside of the eyes here, which will tend to pull the eyes further apart. Looks a little bit less threatening. It's also a little unusual, but goes and pulls it out there and gives extra color to the face. And then the final bit is I'm going to use the brown and the reds with stipple to go and break up the surface. So I will use brown stipple in the shadow of those cheeks and a little across the nose. Oh, I forgot lips. Yep, we'll do that at the same time since I've got the red here. What I want to do here is I'm not going to make the mouth smaller since I'm trying to make her look round and happy and pleasant. So I'm actually going to give her pretty big lips. And very curvy lips as compared to fairly sharp ones, which are what I have naturally. And the upper I'm also using the orangier shade rather than the pinky shade, which was natural for me because it gives that warmer tint. Then I still want to go and put in the age lines. But again, mostly doing it with highlighter so that it doesn't look too aged. And because I'm trying to make them look full, I will actually use a little highlighter like I did in my corrective makeup to give them a fairly plump appearance. So I probably, as a young woman, as this person had an even bigger mouth, a sort of movie star lips, and now they're down to just this. So. Then back to the stipple. I'm using little bits of red here and there. Enough to slightly break up the extreme lines. Not too much there. Notice that I'm not doing a lot with the highlight and shadow here. That gives you a sort of pinched looking mouth. If it ended up looking like there was something missing on stage, I'd put in just the minimum like that. And not more than that. Because doing a fairly strong highlight and shadow on this area has a tendency to make your mouth look very pinched. I don't want to do that. Basically, this makes for a sort of pleasant-faced older person. If I were to do the neck for this, I would probably want to go and emphasize the lines that go across here because, again, they're curves and they're ascending. They're like extra smiles and not use a lot of the verticals that occur from the tendons. So, uh, what I would do is I would take a little bit more makeup, drag it down the neck, and the only thing that I'd really do for this makeup is to run the shadow lines here.
also as with any other part of you. You use what you know about the way your neck stretches to put in selectively the signs of age that you want to suggest the character you're doing. Just a little bit of highlighter in the middle here just because your throat shows up most strongly there. That's the only vertical I'll do on the neck. So, and this is also useful if you specifically want to make your neck look rounder and stouter. You can go and put in this. And the more you want it to look like it's stout, the more you're going to put in um, highlight so that it sticks out more. So, and no particular difference on what you're doing with the hands, you're either making the knuckles show up or not. Uh, you probably, for one like this, do less skeletal knuckles and uh, a little bit of uh, age spots and stipple. That's about it. 